Kaska people, uh, Johnny, Dinner, Legate, John, Truth to God, Nagatali, Honor, Johnny, Ella, Honor, Ross Rose, Hira, Hill Lakes, Francis Lake, the Honor, uh, way down BC, Cogget, the Ella Kaska, Dealer, Kaska, Dinner, Dinner, Johnny, then Dadly saw, so could the Denizalini, he left the Kaska, Kaska, could dinner, Kuka, Denizalini. Nation Two community in Yukon and three in BC. The people uh, utilize the whole territory. Not in, they don't stay in one place, uh, but all over here. They travel and we utilize the whole the whole territory as Dena people, as Casca people. So I am going to take a look at the people. I am going to take a look at the we follow the 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 cycles life, the land, the universe, sun. So this do so kind of that a tenel go lean, the tenel go on lot roads and mine and to go on ติดติดเจนี่ yeah, and she said, tell it all. And the cats go tell us all. Everybody know what's going on. Then. So they got to have us involved right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's important for our communities. As Casca people. But this is our land. It's really important for us. It's, without it, we're nothing. I guess uh, with the mining today, uh, they want to have more communication with us, uh, more input from us. So. So that way, it's it's good, I guess, to to talk about, you know, how, how what we're, our concerns are with mining and our, our, you know, we still rely on the land quite a bit, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to sit down and work, work these things out because young people today too want to work, they want to you know jobs. Like today, we see we see some you know from Ross River from uh, places like that working in in the mining environment. <coughs> So uh, anyway, uh, hopefully we'll be able to see, talk more about our, our way of life and uh, so they can understand where we're coming from when we talk about animals, you know, trees, and air, and water, water, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, the Chintaki Dalanant story, I didn't do a way, no go yarn, yeah, good day, Nikki died, yeah, John Dennis Lini. 
They travel all over. Families go from one end to the other. Of course, we lift places, you know, like Headwaters and Honey, we used to live there, and here, people live here. But most of the time they travel through just to get for survival on the land. That's, that's us, that's who we are as Dena people. People have to have the greatest respect. When you move something, you have to replace something uh, with something else. That's why they say uh, they do a lot of ceremonies sometimes. Like they do songs, and that's where songs come from. That's where, you know, that's a respect for, for, for whatever you do out there. You can't really move things around. You can't, you know, you gotta pray lots or you can have some kind of ceremony of some kind because you get to give the greatest respect to things out there. Because, uh, that's how that's how we are. That's how we live uh, in harmony, they could say, in Sukhanic, uh, in harmony with with everything. When we go out on our land, everything that we use, it's recyclable. We don't leave no garbage behind a long time ago. Nothing. Gets it deadly travel around across our, t- our land, our traditional territory. All you see is fire spots and where we chop wood. So I think uh, people uh, should understand uh, that we, you know, that that there's a lot of interests uh, on our land about from us, from, uh, from the people that, you know, rely on it. And uh, and the water, we concerned about the water. You know, we hear mining, Mining also have tailing, you know, they use chemicals, they use all kinds of different things that that uh, we need to know about and what it what it's doing to our water system, to our, you know, if those things can be looked after. Have great respect. No matter where they are, even just to cut down a tree, have respect knowing that our ancestors traveled this land. Even a mountain, it's sacred for us. The land itself. That's why we are here. Our forefathers, they took care of it. It's sacred. They've got wildlife there, you know. They make babies up there. It's sacred to us. But we try and at all times remember that the Kaska people are the stewards of the land, that they are the people that are connected and part of the land. And it's our responsibility to respect that. I think this is a really tough one for people that aren't from here because we've become in in my world so disconnected from the land and, and connected instead to material goods and money and, and uh, we, we lost our way and you're working in a, in a place where people are far more connected to where they're from and, and, and part of the land, part of the water to, to, to coin a phrase that you, you hear often. And uh, so when we, when we came in it was important for us to ask how we were to conduct ourselves. We were asked to do a prayer ceremony on the mountain at Three Aces before we started. So we built a prayer circle and, and we prayed. And we prayed for safety and we prayed for the land and we prayed, prayed for family and for the people. And, and then we left the prayer circle there. When I was 26, I moved up here and um, lived in Farrell. I didn't work at the mine, but I worked in Ross two days a week and Farrell three days a week. And I couldn't understand why everyone in Faro had a job and everyone in Faro had a house and toys. And, and I would come to Ross and nobody worked at the mine and nobody, the, this lack of jobs and careers, it was, it, it, 
it confused me. And, and I think it shaped me because I saw it done wrong. Before we started, I, I had uh, uh, a message given to me that the Three Aces Project um, is for the Casca people. And uh, it has the potential to uh, change people's lives from a position of dependence to empowerment. But the Casca people have to want it. And so with that in mind, that, that's how we've approached it. That this is not our land, that we are our tenants here, and everything we do needs to be about allowing that opportunity to present itself.